So three isomers of pentane. Can we think what they may be? We've got the one there that's straightforward pentane, all five in a row. And if we look at the carbons in that, hopefully you can see there's no difference between the carbon at the end here that I've called carbon one and this one here that I've also called carbon one. Similarly, absolutely no difference between carbon two there and carbon two there, but there is only one special unique carbon three. So therefore we would expect three peaks in the carbon NMR. And indeed there is the carbon NMR right there. Now, as far as the hydrogens are concerned, it's exactly the same pattern. There's no difference between the three hydrogens here on carbon one and the three hydrogens here on the other carbon one. No difference between the two hydrogens on carbon two and the two hydrogens on carbon two. And then of course you've got carbon three, special unique carbon three with its two hydrogens right there. Okay, so we would expect three peaks as well in the low resolution, one H NMR. Now the next isomer of pentane is we're done with the five carbon chain. So let's go for the four carbon chain, which means we have to stick a methyl group there. And you can only put a methyl group in one position, either there or there. But of course, if you put it there, well, then you just start counting here and go carbon one, carbon two. So two methyl butane or just methyl butane. Looking at the, the carbons, the one here, of course, carbon two, it's unique. But both of the methyl groups attached to carbon two are the same. We could start counting one, two, three, four. We could go one, two, three, four. Both these methyl groups are the same thing. Carbon three unique. And then um, in class, several people thought that this methyl group here, carbon four, would be the same as these carbon ones. Well, if you look at it, you can hopefully see it's not. Carbon one goes to a tertiary carbon and carbon four goes to a secondary carbon. OK, so there's while we would expect carbon one and carbon four to be relatively close to each other, they are distinctly two different carbons. So we would expect four peaks there and there is indeed the spectra. And then moving to the hydrogens. Well, again, if carbon one and carbon one are the same, then the hydrogens attached to them should be the same. Carbon two will have its own special hydrogen. Carbon three will have its two hydrogens. And then the three hydrogens on carbon four are again going to be different from the three hydrogens on carbon ones. So therefore, again, I would expect there to be four peaks there. So three peaks for the N-pentane, four peaks in both spectra for the methyl butane. Last possibility is this one, the 2,2-dimethylpropane, or just dimethylpropane. And hopefully you can see that there's the carbon there, the quaternary carbon that's bonded to the four methyl groups, and all of these methyl groups are identical. So we'd expect to see two peaks there. But now as far as the hydrogens are concerned, there's no hydrogens on carbon one. So the only hydrogens are the ones that would be on carbon two. And so therefore I would just expect the one peak. Relatively straightforward, hopefully. First thing you need when looking at NMR spectra, whether they be carbon or proton, is just to determine how many different types of carbons are there for the carbon spectra or how many different types of hydrogen there are for the proton spectra. Now moving to the higher resolution, so you can see we have the splitting here and also um, some of these spectra, I'll have them, some I won't have them. The appropriate number of hydrogens or the relative number of hydrogens um, associated with the peaks themselves. So looking at this, I hope you can see that we have one, two, three distinct sets of peak in these, this spectrum and one, two, three, four distinct sets of peak in that spectrum. So of course that matches up with what we were expecting in terms of the hydrogens. The top spectrum with the three peaks is going to correspond to this particular one. And the other one with four peaks is going to respond to this particular isomer. Now let's go through and very carefully see where all these peaks come from. OK, first thing is you've got six hydrogens down here that contribute to one peak that split into a so-called triplet. OK, now being split into a triplet means that all six of these hydrogens are next to carbons, at least one carbon that has two hydrogens on it. That's the N plus one rule, right? Two adjacent hydrogens gives rise to two plus one or three splits like this one. 
OK, now what do we see? Well, we've got six hydrogens that are next to carbon with two hydrogens. And obviously, I hope you'd say that's the pink ones. Got these three pink ones here, the three pink ones here. Both sets of pink ones are next to a carbon that has two hydrogens on it. OK, so almost indisputably, well, actually indisputably, um, this peak I'm going to put in a little pink box because it corresponds to these pink hydrogens. OK, now up here we've got two sets here. We've got a set that I would say is um, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then a set here that's kind of one, two, three, four, five. OK, now when we look at what else we've got floating around here, we've got the blue ones and the blue ones are next to carbons that have one, two, three, four, five hydrogens on them. Five plus one is six. So if we're going to see everything beautifully for these blue ones, we should see the peak that's split into six. And then for the green ones here, these are next to one, two, three, four. So therefore, we would expect the green one to be split into five. OK. So there's the quintet split into five. So that's the green ones. And then we have the sextet for the blue ones, because the blue ones are next to one, two, three, four, five hydrogens on adjacent carbons. OK, looking at the, the peak heights, we know that this corresponded to six. We know that these two combined corresponded to six. You can see, I hope that the sextet is about twice as big overall as the quintet because there are four blue hydrogens compared to only two green hydrogens. Let's move down to this one now, the methyl butane. Again, we see a one car, one hydrogen that's got a big split two hydrogens that split into one, two, three, four, five. So the two hydrogen ones should be next to um, carbons that have four hydrogens on them. And then here we've got two signals that combine to give us nine hydrogens. One of those signals, the bigger one, is split into a doublet, which means that all of these hydrogens are next to a carbon with one hydrogen on it. And then these ones down here are split into a triplet. In other words, whatever it is that's giving rise to this peak here, these hydrogens are next to a carbon that has two hydrogens on it. Now, with that in mind, we should be able to fairly quickly assign what's what. If we look at the pink ones, one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens there, so expect a nice big peak there. These are next to a carbon that has one hydrogen. So these six pink ones should give rise to a one plus one or two peak split, otherwise known as a doublet. Moving along here, we now have three protons. And we know we need three here because we've this this whole mess here is nine hydrogens. The pink ones account for six of them. So there's three left. So those three hydrogens left out of this nine contributing to this peak must be next to a carbon that has two hydrogens on it because two plus one is one, two, three. Now, obviously, I hope you would agree, corresponds to the blue hydrogens there. Right, three plus six is nine, giving it rise to the number of hydrogens there. And then these blue hydrogens are on a carbon that's next to a carbon that has two hydrogens. Moving down to this one, one, two, three, four, five, two hydrogens that are split into five means we're looking for two hydrogens that are next to carbons that have four hydrogens on them. Well, here's the two green hydrogens there, and they're next to carbons that have one, two, three, four hydrogens on. So that must be the green. And then finally, obviously, this must be the red up here. Now, let's see where this comes from. Right now, we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven peaks. But this one here is teeny, teeny, teeny. So if there's another one, we wouldn't see it. And certainly this... Um, Red one here is next to carbons that have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'd actually expect a nonet there, but the, the chances of a nonet for one hydrogen being big enough to see all of them rather, rather small. And of course, by a process of elimination, also by the fact that there's just the one hydrogen here, this nice, pretty little pattern must correspond to this red hydrogen here. Hopefully, this analysis of the pentane made some sense. I'm not going to be as detailed or as um, painstaking as I describe future splitting patterns, but hopefully it makes sense where all these came from.